I ask you all to keep an eye open for unauthorised use of the disabled facilities? Only last week I caught a perfectly healthy member of the over 60s aerobic club using the facilities illicitly. She was in no way disabled. She is now. You pushed her down the stairs. I didn't push her, Tim. She lost her footing whilst trying to evade capture. She's in a wheelchair. Well, she's in a wheelchair now, Judy, yes. And if she does come into the centre in her wheelchair, she's perfectly at liberty to use the disabled facility. <laughs> the builders have left, Mr Brittis. They've replaced the uh, partition wall that Mrs Boscombe crashed through. Well done, Gavin. Creep. Right, now, before we go on to our duties, ongoing communication skills. Oh, why do we have to keep on doing this? Because it's ongoing, Tim. It goes on. And on and on. Right, now, module 14, body language. What was module 13? Learning to listen. Oh, I think I missed that. Did I not take any notes? I Linda, not... just shut it, will you, and pay attention. Right. <laughs> now, module 14, body language, establishing a report non-verbally. Can I be excused at this point? Because doing body language when you're pregnant is like talking with your mouth full. <laughs> Tim, just sit down, please, and let's all look at Mrs Bigby's body. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Colin, what do you see? From here, Mr Bridges, or shall I move a bit closer? Without meaning to, Mrs Bigby's body is saying, I don't want to be here, I'm on the defensive, I'm fed up. She's giving out all the wrong messages. Who says they're wrong? I've got the sort of... What is the point of all this? Oh, I'll tell you what the point is, Tim. The point is communication. Here we are in a leisure centre. We have to make people feel relaxed. Our job is to understand what people's bodies are saying to us, and our bodies have to say in return, welcome, relax, feel at ease. Now, can I have a volunteer, please? Right you are, Mr Brittas. <laughs> Perhaps I have a different volunteer? Anyone? Come on, then, Colleen. <laughs> right. Sit down, please, Colleen. <clears throat> Pay attention, everyone, because remember, your body is never silent. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Briggs. <laughs> I didn't think anyone would notice. Colin, I'm talking non-verbally here. Sorry, Mr. Briggs. <clears throat> what are we going to do, Mr. Briggs? <laughs> We're doing it, Colin. Doing what? Tell him, Gary. You're uh, matching and mirroring, Mr. Brutus. I'm matching and mirroring, Colleen. Amazing. What's that, then? It's a technique to put people at their ease. Oh. <laughs> do you feel at ease now, Colleen? I expect I will do shortly, Mr. Brutus. <laughs> It wasn't me, Mr. Brittles. Nobody said it was, Colleen. Miss Ruth, I'm so sorry to disturb you. Did you hear a noise? It wasn't Colleen, Carol. <laughs> Not that sort of noise. A crash. I think it was the roof. Well, I didn't hear any crashing sound. Oh, oh, all, right. Right. Yes. all right, all right. Colleen, go and check it out, please. We'll call Mr. Brittles. Uh, 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 Carol, perhaps you'd like to give us a demonstration, please? Sorry, Miss Brits. You are on the front line of our operation, Carol. Imagine I'm a member of the public. Show us how you welcome me. Welcome to Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre. How may I help you? Very good, Carol. Verbally spot on, but your body is letting you down. I'm sorry, Miss Ruth. <laughs> Try it again, Carol. This time, welcome me with your body. <laughs> yes, Miss Ruth. Welcome to Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre. How may I help you? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good, Carol. Right, now, Linda, perhaps I could use your body for a while, please. <laughs> we want you to feel at home here. You see? We want you to feel at home here. Now, what am I doing? You're stroking Linda's knee. <laughs> Wrong, Tim. I'm anchoring. Hankering after what? <laughs> Not hankering, Julie. Anchoring, as in ship's anchor. It's another little technique we learn on management training course, don't we, Gavin? Y yes, Mr. Britton. Yes, Mr. Britton. <laughs> Are you saying we should grab people's legs to make them feel at home? No, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You haven't even grasped the fundamentals, have you, Julie? No. Neither have I. And quite frankly, Mr. Britton, I'm not prepared to grasp anyone's fundamentals. <laughs> Oh, Colin, have you got 
you got a minute? Not really, Mrs. Brittas. Look, do you know where Gordon is? He's in the restroom giving a fascinating talk about your body. <laughs> I must go. Oh, Colin, you know about plants, don't you? Well, I do have green fingers, you know. Do you think you could look after these for me? Find somewhere to put them. Oh, my pleasure, Mrs. Brittas. Thanks. My, my, that is an interesting little chap. It looks very like Somnium Somnorum. Oh, I don't know what it is. I think I found it in some market. If I'm right, it's from the rainforests of South America. The Bakaku Indians <laughs> use it as a sort of sedative or tranquilizer. Hmm, perhaps it ought to keep some handy. <laughs> I wonder if I might avail myself of a leaf, oh, yeah. see if it settles my digestive problems. There is a rather fanciful story that the Bakaku <laughs> use it to induce a sort of trance-like state. Really? Don't worry, Mrs. Brittis, I'll pop it down to my office later. It'll feel at home there. Ah, Mr. Brittis, can I have a word? Yes, Colin, you can have a word, but I'd also like to see you do things with your body. My office. <laughs> Another example of, Gavin, non-verbal communication. Another example of crawling to the management. Who's teacher's pet, then? Oh, Tim, you're just being silly. It's one of the things we learn on management training courses. Actually, I find them quite interesting. Oh, do you? A few months ago, you'd have found it as ridiculous as I do. But you've changed. You're a boss's man now. It gets on my nerves. Oh, I can give you an official reprimand for that remark. Have you got a tissue? Yes, I have, thanks. <laughs> it's not actually Ben's birthday, but we're having the party today. You're having a birthday party in there? Yes, but please don't tell anyone. Miss Bridges hasn't actually approved the guest list. Ben's so looking forward to it. It's fancy dress. Oh, lovely. Any particular theme? Oh, yes. It's an ugly bug ball. I've sewn Ben into a pillowcase. He's going as a chrysalis. He's in there pupating at the moment. <laughs> right, Julie, the memo to Councillor Druggett in Septuplicate, please. You what? Seven of them. I don't think I've got better things to do. Thank you, Julie. Right, Colin, sit down, please. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Now, about the roof. Colin, let me stop you right there. Where are you going wrong? Sorry, Mr. Brittas. Colin, look at my body and look at your body. <laughs> Spot the difference, Colin. My body is saying, welcome, relax, feel at ease. I don't feel very much at ease looking at your body. You're absolutely right, Mr. Brittas. I'm terribly sorry. Mirror me, mirror me. <clears throat> Carry on. Right, well, I went up on the roof. <laughs> per your instructions and there was this like well it was it was sort of i mean well i don't know how you describe it it was oh colin what is all this stuff that's not body language that's body gibberish i'll tell you what colin forget about your body and concentrate on the words all right now what is on the roof nothing is on the roof <laughs> i'm glad we've established that colin problem solved hey there's a crisis in the sauna mrs bidmead wants you down there straight away Hmm, incapable of dealing with it herself, is she? Short on management skills, you see, Colin. She says if you don't come right away, there'll be one hell of a stink. Well, actually, there is one hell of a stink. Something's contaminated the sauna. Right, I'm on my way. There, nothing is on the roof, but something is in the roof. What? Well, sort of rubble and... Ah, those builders will be nothing but trouble. And there's this sort of, well, like an ice cube. Typical. Boozing on the job. <laughs> Colin, get rid of it and tidy the place up, please. Yes, but... Colin, I've got a crisis to deal with. Incapable of dealing with it yourself? Certainly not, Mr. Brittos. Good man, Colin. <laughs> In you go. Now, this is Sophie. She's a woodlouse. Now, the first game is going to be hide and seek, and it's going to be lots of fun. But listen, children, no one is allowed to leave the cupboard. <laughs> Welcome to Whitburn Newtown Leisure Centre. How may I help you? <laughs> Do you think I could put an ironing board and a microwave in the restroom? Yes, I should think. So. What's the matter, Miss Brooks? Oh, it's all a bit awkward. I, I didn't really mean to, but I sold the house. <laughs> Mr. Brooks isn't seen you move it. No, he doesn't know. I've got a house full of furniture and I don't know where to put it all. I should have moved it yesterday before the new owners moved in. <laughs> Very awkward over breakfast this morning. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. People have moved.
moved in and Mr Bridges didn't notice. No, of course he noticed, but they're American, you see. <laughs> yes, he's in the US Air Force, so I told Gordon they're my cousins from Tennessee. <laughs> for a freezer back there. Hello, my darling. Oh, hello, Gordon. As soon as I get a moment, I'm going to organise a sightseeing schedule for Chuck and Nancy. Oh, there's really no need to bother. No bother at all, my darling. They are your family, although I do hope Chuck's mood improves. He was rather argumentative this morning. Probably jet lag. Yeah, look, Gordon, I... I've got to sort out a crisis in the sauna, my darling. Back later. Oh, God, I wish I hadn't got into this mess. How did it happen, Miss Bruce? Well, it all started about a month ago when this leaflet came through the door saying, are you undervalued? Well, it was just how I felt. So I phoned up and this charming man came round. Then he wanted to bring a friend, this American colonel. Well, one thing led to another and before I knew it, I'd sold the house to the US Air Force. Well, you know how it is. No, not really, Miss Smith. Oh, come on, it must happen all the time. No, not really. Yes, it is a rather unpleasant smell, Mrs Bidmead. It's disgusting. <laughs> yes, indeed. But, of course, it's not really my responsibility. Any unpleasant smells emanating from any other part of the leisure centre are down to me, but the privatised sauna solarium and odours therein are down to you. Well, I think it's coming from somewhere else. Maybe upstairs. Well, I can't smell it anywhere else. And you're bound to get a little bit of a pong in a sauna with all those people sweating. So you're telling me you're not going to do anything about it? What can I do, Mrs Bidmead? This area is no longer within my terms of reference. You're in overall charge. You've got to do something. Look, just to prove I'm being helpful, I put out a tannoy announcement. Saying what? Saying steer clear of the sauna. It stinks to high heaven. <laughs> Ben, I know hide-and-seek in a cupboard has its limitations, but I specifically said no one was allowed to leave. Now, where are Sophie and Fergus? Carol, no more tickets for the sauna, please. I'm declaring it a contaminated zone till further notice. Yes, Miss Bruce. Oh, great, I'm seeing double now. No, it's me. Oh, Tim, sorry, everything's so fuzzy. This is stupid, you should go home. Oh, it clears up in a couple of hours. Anyway, I'm not ill or anything, it's just ocular hypertension. Quite common in senior management, apparently. Well, you shouldn't put the drops in when you're at work. Well, I've got to take them three times a day now. Which means you shouldn't be here, you can't do the job. Look, Tim, I'm management. Management don't go home just because they can't do the job. <laughs> sorry, I'll rephrase that. No need to, you're quite right. <sighs> The point is, Tim, it would be silly to make a fuss and go home now. I've only got to take the drops for another week. I've got a job to do, and I'm going to do it. In a couple of hours, everything will look perfectly normal, and nobody will be any the wiser. Sorry, Gavin. No one will be any the wiser about what? Oh, nothing. It's, um... It's... It's Colin, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Is anything the matter? No, <laughs> nothing at all. There's a funny smell in here. It's probably me. <laughs> I'm dealing with this thing on the roof. What what thing? Well, that's just it. I've got no idea what it is. It's crashed through the roof and lodged itself up there. Well, what is it? Where did it come from? I don't know, but it must have come with such force. Have you ever seen a meteorite? You say it's a meteorite, Colin? No, no, they're very hot and this is very, very cold. And yet, it must have come from... Well, I don't know. <laughs> from outer space? What, what does Britta say? Mr. Britta has put me in charge. I am quite capable of dealing with it myself, Gavin. But I wouldn't mind a second opinion. Would you mind just coming and having a look at it with me? Oh, can't it wait? I'd prefer to go now, Gavin. Y yes, well, you see... Tony, oh. if it is actually from outer space, it might not be such a good idea smashing it up and putting it in the bin. <laughs> well, oh, all right then, but look, it's nothing from the planet Zarg or anything like that. Or, right? You've been watching too many science fiction films. Anything the matter, Gavin? No, no, nothing. I've got a job to do, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> Mr. Britus, what I'm trying to say is that I'm worried about Gavin because he's. Hang on a moment, Tim. <clears throat> right, carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Britus. Well, I think you should put it to Gavin that although he has management responsibilities, that doesn't necessarily mean that he should always keep. What are you doing? I can see you're obviously worried about something, Timothy, so I'm putting you at your ease. Well, strangely, it's not working. In fact, it's having the opposite effect. No, no, it's not, Tim. I'm afraid that's not possible. I've done the course. <laughs> you can't get to the roof that way. Oh, sorry, Colin. I don't know what got into me. You don't seem to be quite yourself today, Gavin. <laughs> Who else would I be? <laughs> Look! 
What? Two strange creatures gone down there. I didn't see anything. But you must have. They looked like, well, aliens. Come in. Come in. Now please stay in there. All right, Fergus. Oh, Grady says, please stay in there. Which way did they go, Carol? Who go where, Colin? Not who, what? Two things. You must have seen them. No, I haven't seen anything. I don't want to run. But they were vile, horrible creatures. I know this might sound odd, but I don't think they were human. Really? That's nice. No, no, Carol, something very strange is going on. To Whitbury New Town Leisure Centre, how may I help you? The sauna is a contaminated zone. <laughs> Hello, Julie. Do you think you could look after this for me? Do I let me leave it in the pool? Yeah, if you like. <laughs> you see, Tim, these are all communication skills. But you haven't let me say what I came to say. Woo, you were saying it all with your body, Tim. Try not to worry so much. Try not to worry so much. Angry. I don't know why I bother to come up here. You see, it's working. Hello, Helen, my little darling. If it's about Chuck and Nancy's sightseeing schedule, I've had a bit of a hiatus. I've got stuck on Wednesday afternoon at 3.17pm. There's really no need to worry, Gordon. Yeah. That's a nice lamp, Julie. Where'd you get it? I bought it. From a shop. A lamp shop. <laughs> Anyway, happy to be getting home, so I've got the bathroom to do. Bye bye, my angel. Very house proud, my wife, Julie. Hmm. We've got a lamp like that. <laughs> Only ours is bigger. Colin! 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 Oh. I'm sorry about that. Are you all right? This is ridiculous. Go home. I can't. I have to put my responsibilities to the general public before my own personal convenience. Oh, you sound exactly like Britus. This has all happened since you've been management. You've changed. You're completely different. <laughs> what happened to the old Gavin? The Gavin that I knew. Are you sure Mr Britus knows what he's doing? He had to close the pool once when we had rats and vials disease. But after six months, everything was fine. Six months? Mm. What's that? Oh, that'll be Ben's party downstairs. Coming up through the air conditioning. Oh my God, it's alive! <laughs> Who are you? Where do you come from? <laughs> what do you want with us? You've taken over Gavin, haven't you? The invasion of the body snatchers all over again. <laughs> well, Gavin Featherly, this is a very sad day. I've had a formal complaint about your behaviour in the swimming pool. I'm therefore going to institute the proper procedures which may well lead to an official reprimand and a permanent stain on your record. <laughs> Whatever possessed you to manhandle this lady? I, I was trying to make her feel at home, Mr Brittis. I, I was anchoring. Oh, Gavin, Gavin, Gavin. What a stupid anchor. <laughs> it could so easily be misinterpreted as sexual harassment and attempted drowning. I'm going to be generous on this occasion and put it down as mental instability. I'm sending you home pending an inquiry. Don't look into his eyes, Mr Brittos! <laughs> Get back to your own kind! Mr. Bridges, he's a body snatcher. Yes, I know, Colin. I'm dealing with it. Gavin, off you go, please. Yes, Mr. Bridges. Mr. Bridges, it's very, very bad news. Gavin's one of them. No, he's not, Colin. <laughs> he's just been accused of molesting one of our female customers. You, you don't understand, Mr. Bridges. I have to protect you from him. Colin, don't be silly. If Gavin's one of them, then quite frankly, so are you and so am I. <laughs> The problem is the eye drops blur my vision. It's OK now, but I've got to keep taking them. You see, I I'm part of a research programme. Coffee, Jen, eat a sausage on a stick. Oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> Did you tell Gordon? No. No, well, you can't tell Gordon anything, can you? <laughs> What's the research for? 
Well, it's to reduce ocular hypertension. We're a small group at the moment, but if the experiment works, well, it's a simple procedure. It could be applied anywhere in the world. Come away from him, Mrs. Bridges! He's not what you think he is. He's after your body. Get out of here. Get out, you vile creature. Well, all right, Colin, calm down. I hardly touched the woman. Calm down, Colin. Take great care, Mrs. Brittus. They're trying to take you over. Trying? No, they already have done. Eight o'clock this morning, they demanded vacant possession. Oh, no. Well, what could I do? I just had to give in. Stay in there! Not you as well, Carol. Oh, my word, this is a nightmare. They're everywhere, aren't they? Oh, I'm sorry, Colin. I've done my best, but I've tried to keep them under control, but you know how it is. Colin, are you all right? You don't look your normal self. Oh, no. Not me as well. Well, Mrs. Britta's come quick. Colin's gone berserk. He's chained himself up in the changing room. He's ranting and raving. Linda, there are proper guidelines laid down for this eventuality. Responsibility for the outbreak of mental instability amongst members of the staff has now been devolved to the deputy management. I suggest you go and see Gavin. You've just sent Gavin home for mental instability. Right, I better go and investigate. <laughs> Has suicide been mentioned? Not as far as I know. Do you want me to suggest it? Linda, I'm going to deal with this, all right? If he's ranting and raving... Hang on, there may be some Benlin in my bedside table. <laughs> What's my bedside... What sort of furniture doing here? Just trying to carry out your policy, Mr Brutus. Miss Brutus's idea. We do want people to feel at home, don't we? My darling, you are an angel. Mustache, Colin's gone mad, apparently. <laughs> now then, Master Colin, what are you doing hanging about in here? I've changed, Mr Brittus. I think I've been taken over. I might be possessed. Shall I exercise him, Mr Brittus? Linda, this is no time for exercise. No, exorcise. I could purge him of his demons. Linda, I thought I told you to leave this to me. Yes, sorry. <sighs> Mr. Brittus wanted to know if you'd like to kill yourself. Linda, <laughs> off you go now, please. Right, Colin. <clears throat> Try and relax. <laughs> now, what is this all about? It is you, is it, Mr. Brittus? Well, of course it's me. Yes. Yes, I can see that now. You're behaving quite normally. You're putting me at my ease, aren't you? Matching and mirroring. I feel better already. Maybe they haven't got me yet. Who hasn't got you? The alien frog spawn in the roof. <laughs> you are suffering from what is clinically known as raving madness. <laughs> that thing that came through the roof, it's from out of space. It's alive. It spoke to me. I thought you said the builders left it. No, no. It's giving birth to nasty little creatures who are taking over our bodies. It's got Gavin and Carol already and your good wife, I'm afraid. I know it may sound a bit far-fetched. Not at all, Colin. Can you hear the talking now? Can you hear voices? No, Mr Bridos. Can you? <laughs> well, of course I can't hear voices, Colin. I'm not the one who's barking mad. I'm the same as I ever was, Mr Bridos. Very possibly, Colin. But that doesn't get us very far, does it? Why have you chained yourself up? Because I could have been a danger to the human race, Mr. Britters. I thought I'd been taken over by them. The body snatchers. <laughs> you see, you look just the same. Well, I could have been me or some grotesque, horrible creature. There's no telling the difference. Mm, I can see the problem. <laughs> when you think about it, Mr. Britters, it all makes sense. You see, those aliens could have chosen to land anywhere in the world, but they came here. Why? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Because of you, Mr. Brittus. Our leader. A man of vision with advanced communication skills. It's destiny. You have to negotiate with them on behalf of the human race. Cometh the hour. Cometh the man. <laughs> I'm beginning to see what you're getting at, Colleen. You may have a point. Just come and look at it. See what you think. All right, Colin, but I'm still taking this with a pinch of salt. Come on. Er, uh, Mr. Brittus. Where's the key? I swallowed it. <laughs> I never thought I'd be glad I had a jippy tummy. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> my Colin. Good grief. Looks like a bomb's dropped in here. Not a bomb, Mr. Brittus. That. It's got a lot smaller since it's been giving birth. There's got to be some sort of rational explanation for this, Colin. 
It's talking to you, Mr. Britas. I knew it would. It didn't sound much like talking to me. I expect it's trying to establish contact. Please, Mr. Britas, if anyone can get through to it, you can. Please try. Use your powers of communication. Colin, look at it. You seriously propose I should try matching and mirroring with that? It's laughable. It understands you, Mr. Britas. I knew it would. <clears throat> I don't know if you've come from another planet or if you can understand me. But if you have, and if you can, I'd like you to know that you have effected an unauthorised entry into this leisure centre, <laughs> which is in clear breach of the council bylaws, incurring automatic membership suspension. Also, you're going to have to pay for this damage. <laughs> I don't have to do something about it now. It smells spreading. Someone's just passed out on the squash court. <laughs> oh, welcome to Whitby Newtown Leisure Centre. How can I help you? <laughs> yes, just a minute. Miss Briss? Mm -hmm. Telephone. Oh. <laughs> it's an American gentleman. Oh, right. Hello. Try lulling it into a false sense of security. It's not a very pleasant smell, Colin, whatever it is. It's probably fear, Mr. Britas. That's how it affects me. <laughs> Try putting it at its ease. <clears throat> My name is Gordon Britas. I am the manager, or as it were, the leader of the leisure centre. <laughs> Welcome. We want to make you feel at home here. We want to make you feel at home here. Colin, I don't think there's an awful lot of point in this. Quick, Mr. Bridos, it's trying to escape. After it! <laughs> this way! Yes, we thank you. Goodbye. That was the American Air Force. We've got the house back! All the furniture can go! Oh, oh that's a shame. I was just getting used to having neighbours. <laughs> Chuck's being transferred to avoid some sort of diplomatic incident. They didn't mess about. He's already on his way to Beirut. It's heading for the basement. He was flying one of those big troop carriers when he made a mistake. What sort of mistake? Well, it's fine, like Colleen. A... Mr. Briss, about the smell. Not now, I'm saving the planet. <laughs> Apparently, he pressed the wrong button and ejected the entire contents of the toilet tank. He dropped a huge block of ice, half a ton of frozen urine, somewhere over southern England. It's on its way, Mr. Briss. I can hear it coming. Now, if I can just get this undone, we should be able to trap it here and seal off the basement. Let me help, Colleen. It's all right, Mr. Briss. I've got it. 